Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception. I wish to discuss a case which again is a very interesting case and uh, something which can throw light on uh, either uh, trying to improve the results in this case. So a 27 year old girl who is married for 8 years, hypothyroidism, controlled on thyroxine, uh, male factor 7 million, 30% suggestion motile, AMH of 1.5 nanogram per deciliter, T2 FSH 7.3, LH 4.01 and 8 under follicles 5 on the right side and 3 on the left. So the stimulation started with HMG of 225 antagonist protocol on the day of trigger the LH was 1.65 and the E2 was 1.329. Trigger was, was a dual trigger of Ovitrial and Lupride and the pickup was done at 35 hours. Only one follicle was present, the rest had ruptured and one oocyte was retrieved. Uh, metaphase 2 poor quality, narrow perivitaline space and granular cytoplasm and the question was can we advise us as oh, oh, what should we do uh, I don't, I, frankly I don't see anything wrong in this protocol uh, one is it is not a very high protocol uh, and uh, many of us will use this protocol to stimulate the ovary and often this protocol seems to will give us good results let's have a look at the folliculogram and again I would advise all of you to use a folliculogram uh, and there's a simple reason, you know, um, many of you will send me a query writing numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 13, 14, 15, 18. Hang on guys, I'm a doctor and have a look at all our training. At we doctors, the way our brain works is it's a visual format. You know, we remember things very well. We watch things once and we can do it. We watch symptoms, signs and we can do it. We are not engineers or mathematicians and numbers fox me. It may be my problem, you know. I, I just, they just fox me, I see multiple numbers and I just can't format it into a picture. And what does a folliculogram do? It formats it into a picture. So have a look here. And have, when you have a look at this folliculogram, by day 4 there is already a response, an already a response of 14. And that is a crucial thing, a very good and very important thing. And that will decide on your stimulation. Next. Have a look at what happens by day 7 and the centrotide has started and you give an HMG, it doesn't matter what you give and what happens next and next what happens is the growth is gradual. So between day 4 and day 7 you are not seeing an excessive growth, you are seeing a very gradual growth and that's very good. Then what happens later and later remember in as in nature as in IVF the requirements for FSH go down. and if your dose is the same, what's going to happen? In some cases, you see a more rapid response. So they will, when you go, you see the right side of response has taken a trajectory in the range of 60 to 70 degrees. The trajectory is very similar to the trajectory from day 1 to day 5. And the only difference of trajectory is have a look at how the follicles have grown between day 4 and day 7 much slower and then a more rapid growth. Now, uh, now the, the, the other, what I want you to see in this case is specifically a, a couple of things which I want you to have a look is have a look just at the trajectory that goes on and, uh, and what you will see here is that there is a certain length and then a certain rise. Now I've got a theory about this and it, it, it may well be wrong but it's a theory that makes sense. Let's go back to our history. Okay, AMH which is on the lower side and a good number of antral follicles. And what does that tell us? And that tells us, I think, is that the first thing that goes down is AMH and antral follicles then start declining. And we know that because non-growing follicles first start dying and then growing follicles start getting less and less and less. And typically you start in PCOS, as the AMH goes down, you still continue to see a lot of follicles. And I think the same happens with women with a lower result. And then the AMH tells you a different story and the antral follicle tells you a different story. 
and one of the things which I often worry is that we have uh, we don't use a binary way of thinking we just decide that's it the AMH is low and and that, that will be the end and in this case I, I, I think what this may have happened and uh, let's look at this way that you have AMH which is low and what is the role of AMH is to hold back follicles and you then give a high dose and suddenly what happens is these follicles who are more sensitive and the reason they are more sensitive is because the resistance of AMH is limit is less so as soon as you give a dose of 225 they go back and suddenly you see that they have done something which in, they don't do in nature and you see follicles reach about 13 to 14 millimeter on day 4 and I think that that's when you're, you may have lost the entire uh, story because from then on what you're looking at you're looking at a phenomenal growth of follicles with a possibility that the duration of stimulation is limited and the duration of stimulation is limited to 9 to 10 days and you will see here a uh, 10 day of stimulation the trigger probably was done and suddenly what you are trying to do is you are, are, are looking at the racing of the follicle without probably the time for the oocyte to develop and, I, and that could be one of the causes w what would I do again let me reiterate this is not a wrong protocol you know until you try it and the doctor hasn't given a very high dose too and until you try it there is absolutely no way of knowing how this will uh, pan out so let's have a look again at where my theory comes up what are you looking at and what you're looking at is a slightly uh, again have a look at my theory so what you've seen is this is a follicleogram you've seen the growth go that way this way and that way over a short period so very dramatic growth that has occurred now what do I want a growth I want a growth that is this way and going that way which means that I've had uh, and the way I say is this is strength uh, again I'm using a slightly uh, physics uh, tone to this and what, I, what this has taught me is I uh, usually draw a trajectory and I say well trigger around day 11 or 12 that's what happens in nature so a trajectory that is a 45 to 50 degree trajectory of follicles growing and that is normally what you see and that's what probably we have been taught and then what you're seeing is you're trying to map out this follicle rise and I always then draw two uh, lines and to say this is what was done and this is what we prefer and then I say if there's a, if there's a gap and I'll, I'll then think that it is very likely that there, there is a very aggressive stimulation so what do I want to do and I, what do I want to do is I want to prolong the follicular phase and I want to prolong the follicular phase and bring that 13 day recruitment to day 7 or 6 so which means I'm trying to work around 2 days and the only way I can do that is by lengthening the initial phase and those of you who have seen my talk on uh, you know the uh, FSH uh, levels reached the faster you, the higher dose you give, you reach the FSH levels very, very fast. So by giving a low dose FSH of let's say 150 or maybe you use clomiphene, you're going to widen that window and recruit more follicles. And I think eight follicles, you should be able to do slightly better. I'm not going to talk of random starts or of uh, luteal phase start because I don't think that is uh, needed. Once again, what I'll always ask you to do is have a look at the the so-called goody triangle and when you have somebody's AMH that is low have a look at where the follicles are and if the follicles are somewhere here you know the dose you, you, you'll only get three follicles growing don't waste your time and your money and her money pushing the, the ovary very hard and that's where mild stimulation works out much better not that it works out much better a high stimulation does not give you any magic 
And we're not magicians, we are clinicians and we are scientists and we need to work this out slightly more differently. So what I would suggest is draw that and then see what do you have here and that will decide how your follicles grow. Now if you have a lot of, let's say five follicles here, these follicles already are escaping the effect of AMH. So why do you want to give a very high dose? That's not needed. Go on a lower dose. And I think it will work out much better. And somebody else suggests that yes, this can work out slightly better. And it may make sense to go on to a milder stimulation protocol. I want you all to start looking at the size of follicles. I want you all to look at how the follicles are, are grow. I think giving high dose stimulation, giving aggressive stimulation, I think it does two things. One is it goes against the physiology. And second, it becomes expensive for the patient. And, and even on the NHS, it becomes expensive for the trust. And you don't get their objective. There is a role for high dose in, in women with low AMH. And there is a role for low dose. There is a role for how to modify doses to get your best response. And there is a role to how you extend the, the recruitment window by a, a small growth. And this is what I think over the next year I'll, I'll get you learning and those who come to the course too, I'll get you to learn how you start changing the stimulation pattern. How do you decide where do I increase the dose and why do I increase it? And again, I'll say, ask the question why and that is forms the foundation of all our science. Is if you don't get an explanation, ask the question why. I'll try my best to answer it. But here again, have a look again. Go back to your triangle. Have a look. Map your follicles. Follicles which are bigger are escaping AMH and more easily to be stimulated. And often there is a difference between how you use pulse, pulsatile FSH by modifying clomiphenol letrozole and you use non-pulsatile FSH by giving FSH. And that's a theory which we will slowly discuss. And I think, I, 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 trust me, over the period of a year or two, I will change some of your concepts as my concepts also get changing. Thank you very much.